What theological underpinnings influence your sermons? Do you personally lean Reformed Calvinist or Arminian Wesleyan? Great question. Uh, yeah. So just for folks who uh, don't know what all those fancy terms mean, uh, this is on the question of, is salvation predetermined by God, and he's got a limited set of people that he's already decided are going to be saved and nobody else is going to be saved? That's Calvinism. Uh, it's the idea that's oftentimes wrapped up in the idea of, or the term predestination. Arminianism says that people have free choice as to whether or not they're going to follow Jesus or reject Jesus, and that following or rejecting Jesus is uh, uh, then sealed by God, and that's what the Bible means when it's called predestination. Those of you who know me who have been around a while know my answer to this question is I lean towards the free will Arminian side of things, and uh, there's a couple of reasons why. Number one is the vast majority of scriptures in the Bible that relate to salvation have it tied to a personal choice. Jesus says, whoever believes in me will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, for he's not believed in God's one and only Son. Even the most famous Bible verse in all the world, for God so loved the world, that he sent his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life, lean towards the Arminian perspective. It's whoever believes, it's whoever has faith, it's whoever makes the choice that salvation is determined by a response to God. That God doesn't just love part of the world, for God so loved the whole world that he sent his one and only son. So he's made salvation available through Jesus for all people, not just for part of the people. And those people can choose to believe or choose to reject Jesus. It's on their plates. Now, I think it's an important thing to note that in the midst of this, there are some great passages that would support a Reformed viewpoint. So reform people are, you know, bright, articulate, intelligent people uh, that are doing their best to understand the scriptures. If you look at places like Ephesians chapter 1 or Romans 7 through 9, you'll find the word predestination comes up all the time. And the big debate between uh, uh, Arminians and Calvinists is not, is predestination real? It's biblical. So both views believe it. The question is, does free will or choice come before predestination, or does predestination come before our free will and our choice? The Calvinist says God has already picked the people, so people will freely choose later to be able to follow Jesus. The Arminian says God foreknows who's going to freely choose him, and because of that, he's able to predestine them towards uh, what they've been called to. And if you look in the Bible, you'll find both. You'll find predestination, and you will find free will. But I ask the question of, okay, as you look through the scriptures, is there any scripture anywhere that has both of those in like the same verse in order, in a kind of a causal order? And you'll find if you take a look at Romans chapter 8, verse 29, I know this really well because this question came up last hour uh, too, and so, you know, it wasn't predestined, but it was there. <laughs> So Romans 8, 29 says, For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his Son. So in this case, Romans 8, 29, foreknowledge precedes predestination. Choice comes first, and then uh, God knows about the choice. God seals the choice in predestination. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. So you have this very clear order of events of this first, this second. So uh, because of that and uh, the weight of the majority of Scripture, I lean Arminian, but I have a high respect for people who are from the you know, Reformed perspective. They're like next-door neighbors, like Arminianism, Reformed theology. It is not that far off from one another. It's one key point that we need to talk about, but some of my best friends in the world are Reformed people, and we are on mission together.